Earth. The element of substance, considered as the most stubborn one among the four, with a nation of people who are proud, resilient, and strong, with a culture and legacy that can endure countless trials, surviving the test of time. An element that seems immovable, unstoppable, and everlasting. As a testament to their greatness, today, we are going to be ranking the best earthbenders in Avatar and The Legend of Korra. And later on, we'll be asking ourselves the question, who is the greatest earthbender in the Avatar universe? But before we begin, let me just make it clear that we will have a slightly different criteria for ranking ranking the following benders, compared to the one I used in my previous tier list about a year ago. And if you've already seen that video, you will notice that I'm going to repeat a few points with some benders while rearranging the rankings a little bit just to fit our new guidelines. I also want to say that although we have our set of criterias, the final outcome of this list will ultimately depend on my own personal opinions. If you have different takes about the rankings, you can leave a comment down below after the video so we can talk more about it. Now without further ado, let's begin. We'll be starting with the lowest tier or the average level. Earthbenders are pretty decent or skilled. First up is Kori Morishita, the daughter of the mayor of Yudao, a former Fire Nation colony in the Earth Kingdom. Her earth bending skills were complemented by her use of her earthen meteor hammer. With her bending, she could change the trajectory of her chained weapon to enhance her attacks. However, in the Kyoshi novels, it was explained that some people use weapons to compensate for their lack of control and strength in earth bending. And I am assuming that that is the case for our first entry, because if her earth bending was stronger, then she wouldn't have had the need to rely on weapons in battle. That's why I'm putting her in the lowest spot of our list. Next up will be Gao, the leader of the Earth Kingdom garrison featured on Zuko alone. The man uses two metal warhammers to buff his attacks. Like Cory, Gao seems to be the type of earthbender who requires this assistance in order to excel at bending. Notice how quickly he lost the match against Zuko after his hammers were knocked off his hands. If he was a stronger earthbender, he wouldn't have had to rely on his weapons to unleash his barrage of medium-sized rocks against Zuko in their duel. Many sandbenders live in the Siwong Desert, and although they are very familiar with bending sand, we didn't get to see their proficiency in bending solid earth within the show. So by default, we'll be putting the average sandbender in this level as well. Haru, together with his dad Tyro, also belong here. Because although they have experience liberating Earth Kingdom prisoners out of Fire Nation prisoner camps, they didn't show anything special in their earth bending. Their skills look pretty decent though, that's why they belong in this decent tier. Next up will be the average Earth Kingdom soldier. Mainly because these guys probably had formal military training. And that knowledge can translate well in their bending. Hideous drills and experience in the front lines probably hardened these soldiers. However, they didn't have a very solid win rate against the other stronger fighters and benders in the show. And apart from the stock standard earth bending skills, these guys don't seem to do anything special or spectacular. Next up is Sun. He was a poor young boy living in Yudao, fighting in an underground bending tournament in order to eat and survive. What's special about this kid is that on top of his earth bending, he also has an extremely rare ability that could help him take on anyone. He knows how to lava bend. Although he seems strong, I'm not putting him higher because he didn't seem to have have good control over his bending, and if it weren't for Toph and her students, this kid could have put a lot of people's lives in danger due to his destructive strength and abysmal control. He has the potential to be one of the most threatening benders in the world if Toph trains him well, and if he had only been a few years older and more experienced, I could have easily moved him up the rankings. But his inexperience and severe lack of control with his bending made me feel like he still belongs in the C tier. I think Toph's students, Houghton, Penga, and the Dark One also belong in this tier, for they are advanced enough to teach basic forms of earth bending and metal bending to their juniors in the Beifong Metal Bending Academy. Together, they were able to stop a building from collapsing, and after a long period of training under Tough, we can safely assume that they have already enhanced their bending abilities to belong to this spot. I also think that Penga is the highest ranked among the three, because she was the one who impressed Tough the most in their own comic. But the highest spot in this level belongs to the Canyon Guide of the Great Divide. His earth bending skills are great and very effective when it comes to shaping the environment to help people get through rough terrain. But he seemed really weak when it comes to fighting. That's why even though he showed some excellence as a guide, I will not be putting him higher on this list. Now we're moving on to the B tier, the elite level. Benders who, in their own way, are highly skilled. And the first person on this list is Ai Wei. The only reason why Ai Wei is in this tier is because he is known to use a highly specialized earth bending technique, which we know as seismic sense. And that allows him to sense vibrations on the ground and check other people's heart rate, which in turn enables him to know whether a person is lying or not. I'm not putting him any higher because we didn't get to see him do a lot of earth bending, but his knowledge, expertise, and specialization indicate that he probably has a strong grasp of his elements. Next up will be the hippo and the boulder. In my old tier list, I put them in the average level, but after a few considerations, I realized that these two are probably a lot stronger than the average Earth Kingdom soldier and should have been put higher. The hippo has the strong and huge build that he can capitalize on. He was also shown to be able to absorb attacks without being shaken. His massive strength and toughness even allowed him to tilt a whole stage. That's why I believe he has what it takes 
needs to be in this level. The boulder also displayed his advanced skills when he defeated many contestants in the underground earthbending tournament. Even Katara was impressed, saying to Aang that the boulders got some decent moves. So those are the reasons why these guys deserve to be in this tier. Next up in this tier will be the metal benders of the Republic City Police. For we can assume that they have high proficiency when it comes to earthbending and metal bending. They seem highly trained and can work in teams to handle many complex situations. They're practically like Spider-Man at this point because of their very high mobility, swinging from building to building all thanks to their mastery of the use of their metal wires. Similar to the Republic City metal benders, I like to see the benders of the metal clan as the special ops of the show. Zhao Fu prided herself as the safest city in the world and its metal bending police force helped Team Avatar to win against the Red Lotus, who are some of the best benders in the world in the rescue operation in Zhao Fu. Next up will be the Dai Li Agents, a feared and respected organization founded by Avatar Kyoshi herself. They have specialized bending techniques that are not displayed by average earthbenders and have actually put up a good fight against the gang when they fought in their encounters. These guys can walk like ninjas on walls and have displayed a wide variety of attacks using small projectiles and objects. They are highly coordinated and are very good at fighting in teams. They are quick on their feet and can launch huge pillars of rock that they can use in battle. We're also putting Long Feng here because as the leader of the Dai Li, we can safely assume that he has all the skill sets displayed by the average Dai Li agent or even more. Master Yu also belongs in this level. Together with Shin Fu, they managed to take down a lot of hardened bounty hunters in the Misty Palms Oasis. And he has experience in teaching earthbending formally in his own school. And Shin Fu, being the host and runner of the underground earthbending tournament, probably has a ton of experience under his belt. He even displayed his agile street style of earthbending when he dished out his flashy attack combos and spinning finisher move in his matchup against Toph. We're also gonna put Ya Ling in this tier. Ya Ling is a highly skilled earthbender and the daughter of Li Ling, one of the business counselors of Cranefish Town, which will later on become Republic City. Ya Ling served as an antagonist in the graphic novel Imbalance, which featured a conflict between non-benders and benders in the backdrop of their version of the Industrial Revolution. She showed a lot of talent, being able to mold broken earthen structures back to how they once were. And what's special about her is that she managed to stand her ground against Toph, even knocking her off her balance. Holding her own against one of the best earthbenders in the world proves that Yaling's earthbending skills are above average. As for Su Yin's kids, Wing and Wei, I think they also belong in this level. They seem to have a strong understanding of metal bending and was shown to have all the metal clan's officers' skill sets. They know when to get in and when to get out of fights and they have played a significant support role in different difficult situations against their opponents. They were very helpful during the Red Lotus attack and they seem very athletic and strong enough to be in this tier. They also managed to invent their own sport using metal bending and that says a lot about their bending creativity. They are like the Captain Americas of the metal clan because they may not be your main hitters but you'd sure as hell be glad to have them on your team because they are very useful as supports. That's why I believe they deserve the top spot of this tier. As for who won, the artist, I think he belongs in the average tier because he didn't seem to know how to fight using his earth and metal bending. As we dig deeper down our list, we have now reached the master level. Benders who are strong enough to properly train others in the arts of earth bending. If they made it on this tier, then we can consider them to be some of the best earth benders in the world. First up in this tier is Avatar Korra. I don't think there's much for me to explain other than the fact that earth bending came very easy for Korra and she became quite familiar with it at a very young age. She's just simply good at this element and she was able to bend earth better in combat than many others in the show. Her earth bending style is light, quick, and precise and as a testament to her talents and natural ability, she managed to pick up metal bending quite quickly and explore the possibilities within that area. The only reason why I'm not putting her higher is because I think Korra relies too much on her natural strength and although she has the expertise, I believe she lacks the creativity. That's why in many scenes, her earth bending attacks seemed very ineffective, repetitive, and basic. Just straight up throwing rocks at others in most fights without displaying the essence of earth bending, which is listening and waiting, disrupting the opponent's balance, striking at the right place at the right time. Next up in this list is my favorite character in The Legend of Korra, Bo Lin. Bo Lin has a signature pro bending style of earth bending, someone who relies on speed, agility, and precision over strength and magnitude. Bo Lin is very bouncy on his feet, and he's got that quick draw precision projectile earth bending skills that you can count on. I mean, the man can definitely land a shot. He also has a wide array of skills that allows him to dig tunnels underground and raise up moving platforms, something that can come in handy during escape situations. Bo Lin is not a metal bender, but what's very spectacular about him is that he managed to awaken the powerful ability of lava bending, something that enabled him to even the playing field with severely overpowered benders like Gazan. Bo Lin also seemed to have a talent with his new skill, for he instantly learned how to lower the temperature and solidify lava within his vicinity in his first try. The only reason why I'm not putting him higher is that although he excels at quick draw earth bending using small objects, Bo Lin didn't seem to have the affinity to deploy massive size 
as a Sephiroth in his battles. Unlike others who can bend well using both small and large objects very effectively. Bolin, however, is a reliable member of Team Avatar with highly specialized skill sets. That's why I think he definitely belongs in the master tier. The highest entry in this level is none other than Avatar Aang. Typical earthbending is all about standing your ground and facing challenges head on, while airbending is typically about finding your way around things, following the path of least resistance. That is why earthbending is the thing that Aang struggled with the most, and that's because it opposes his nature. He also didn't know how to metal bend, let alone how to lava bend without the Avatar state, and because of that, some people might think that he should have been put lower than Bolin or Korra in this list. But in the latter parts of the series and the comics, I believe Aang managed to become a great master in earthbending because he has showcased a lot of advanced skills using this element. Aang is one of, if not, the most talented person in the Avatar universe, and his creativity was shown when he sculpted out a relic out of a chunk of rock in a matter of seconds. He can also make launch pads not just for himself, but for other people during certain situations. He knows how to bend crystals, and he was able to make the floor move like a wave of water in season 2 when he was fighting against Azula. Like Bolin, Aang can also land a shot, but unlike Bolin, Aang was able to land massive shots, launching boulder-sized chunks of rock as projectiles to hit the propellers of Ozai's airship with extreme nice. precision. He also displayed the strength and magnitude of his earthbending when he moved the towering pillar of rock against Ozai, even without using the Avatar state. As the champion of peace, he uses earthbending to restrain his opponents, just so he can incapacitate them in battle, instead of just straight up hurting them. Sure, he doesn't know how to lava bend and metal bend, but as the OG tough Beifong disciple, Aang managed to learn the powerful skill of seismic sense. This skill allowed him to defeat the most powerful firebender in the world. When the Fire Lord attacked him with his back turned, Aang's relationship with earthbending may have been rocky at the beginning, but I'm pretty sure he managed to master this stubborn element later on in his life. Now we're moving on to the Grandmaster level. The high A tier is a level that is just slightly above the previous one. Our first entry is none other than Republic City's Chief of Police, Lin Beifong. Unlike Su Yin and Kuvira, Lin has decades of experience serving in the Force, dealing with different threats from hardened criminals and triad members. Her earthbending is also top notch. Being her mother's daughter, she was able to use seismic sense, sensing the vibrations in the ground to gain information that could be vital in her missions. Lin is very good, not just at 1v1s, but also in dealing with multiple opponents all at once. And the strength and magnitude of her earthbending are also phenomenal, allowing her to deal colossal damage to different structures and objects. She's also versatile when it comes to duels, having a lot of attack options due to her mastery of earth and metal. Compared to Kavira and Su Yin, with their flexible and graceful bending style, Lin's technique lies heavier on the steadfast and headstrong side of earthbending, and her strength and balance were clearly shown in her attacks and stances. Next, the following duo of mentor and protege clinched the following spots in the Grandmaster level, and they are none other than Kuvira and Su Yin. Like what I mentioned earlier, apart from their fighting abilities and feats, creativity plays a huge role in determining who goes up in our tier list, and these two fierce warriors have no shortage of all that. Let's start with Su Yin. If Kuvira specializes in her precision, speed, and control, the matriarch of the Metal Clan, Su Yin, stands out with her graceful use of earthbending and metal bending. I say graceful and artistic because her bending and martial arts are a sight to behold, looking like an Olympic level earthbending acrobat and gymnast. Flexible agile, highly skilled. Her fight sequences are actually some of the scenes that I enjoyed the most in the whole series, just because of how well choreographed they were. Su Yin traveled the world when she was young, picking up a lot of great lessons and techniques along her way, and her experience was shown in the way she fights. When it comes to fighting strength, I believe that Lin is stronger than Su Yin, but when it comes to technique and creativity, I believe that Su has that slight edge. Su Yin could even sense and bend metal out of a person even without seeing it. Tuff said that Su Yin didn't really pick up metal bending that well, but I think that Toph would have been very proud of her if she witnessed in person how versatile and decisive Su Yin turned out to be when it comes to fighting, creating armor and weapons out of metal in a flash, and managing to take out one of their most troublesome opponents in the show in a very mind-blowing way when she was given enough opening. Next up is Kuvira. Kuvira practically wiped the floor with a rusty avatar Korra during the Battle of Zhao Fu, and in their 1v1, Kuvira looked like a world champion counterpuncher, bobbing and weaving. She was straight up looking like a fed Talia, being controlled by Faker during worlds just because of how flawless and precise her dodge mechanics and combos were. What's special about her is her strategic and efficient use of her metal bending. Her signature move involved the use of small metal strips that she launches to bind and incapacitate her opponents in her battles. She doesn't seem to make any wasted movements, and we can see her as a person who knows how to wait and listen, looking for the most optimal position to launch her attacks, often targeting her opponent's weak points. She has all the highly advanced skill sets in earth and metal bending as a former captain in the metal clan, and she is very quick in 
and shaping metal to the form she desires during combat, showing her control and creativity. What's even more impressive is that she managed to control a skyscraper-sized robot with her bending. Just imagine how much control she has over her elements. Next up in this tier is Janju. Janju was an earthbending master within Kuro's team avatar. He later became an earth sage and gained influence over the supposed avatar Yun and the earth kingdom. He was regarded as one of the greatest earthbenders of his generation and he has one of the highest kill counts ever recorded in avatar history. In one night, he was able to defeat and bury 5,000 people from organized criminal groups known as the Daofei and that earned him the title of grave digger in the underground society. He had a very unorthodox style of earthbending which is spontaneous, unpredictable, and highly creative and he's very good at making earthen structures of interesting forms, often using small planks of earth to assist his mobility. His control and command over small objects and his environment is so great. It was even described that it was as if the earth itself was bowing to his immense power. Large chunks of rock are also no problem for Janju because with one simple motion, he was able to easily cut a huge boulder in two that was thrown at him without breaking a sweat. Janju's earthbending was surgical, unique, dominating, and monstrous. That's why he belongs in this tier. Next on this list is Red Lotus's resident lava bender, Gazan. Gazan took down the Great Wall of Ba Sing Se all by himself. Need I say more? In Book 3 of The Legend of Korra, the Red Lotus members were described as the ultimate benders, able to take down anyone on a 1v1. Benders who are too strong that altogether, they could take down entire nations. Gazan is a very deadly lava bender, and the fact that his bending technique is very rare makes his attacks very hard to counter. He seemed very agile despite his huge build, and he has a lot of moves to dish out during battle. Able to throw multiple flaming chunks of rock within seconds, and create craters of lava, manipulating his environment to work for his advantage. He was so dangerous and powerful that if people leave this man unchecked, he could definitely destroy entire towers, buildings, and settlements. Given enough time and opportunity, he may have been able to destroy the world and all known major cities within the four nations with the magnitude of his lava bending. That's why he belongs in this high spot. Next up in the Grandmaster tier is Avatar Yun. During Kyoshi's time, an earthbender named Yun, due to his immense talents, was mistakenly identified as the next avatar after Avatar Kurok and because of this, he was given the opportunity to undergo rigorous training under the best bending masters of the four nations, learning their philosophies and techniques, applying them to his earthbending. What's phenomenal about him is his long-range precision bending, allowing him to communicate to others by bending small pebbles into letters and characters, even at long distances. He also has very unique abilities, such as being able to bend paint from portraits and making explosives out of them, dealing massive damage to his enemies. This shows how great his control and connection to the element was. He was also very quick at turning earth into spears and bullets, rapidly launching them against his opponents. As for his strength, he was able to lift and decimate entire buildings, and his earthbending was so monstrous, he was able to get the upper hand not just against the best benders in the world, but also against a powerful and sinister spirit. He was also able to transform building foundations and a solid stone floor into a form similar to liquid, forming waves on the ground. And with this move, he was able to trap Avatar Kyoshi when they fought each other. And it was only due to the combined efforts of Kyoshi's unlikely team avatar that they managed to defeat Yun. A lot of advanced earthbending techniques came very easy for Yun, as if he was loved by the earth itself. That's why he belongs in this level. Next, like what I mentioned before in my previous video, Bumi is a beast. He was the first bender in the series who introduced to us the concept of neutral Jing, something that was known to many as the key to earthbending. Despite his old age, Bumi was able to take down Ozai's colossal statue out of Amashu, and his technique and precision are also top-notch, stacking Fire Nation tanks on top of one another. What's great about Bumi is how quickly he can dig a hole and tunnel in and out of the ground. Imagine all the skill shots this man could dodge if he spams this technique just to increase his mobility in combat. Taking advantage of that underground dimension, he can also earthbend with just using his face. And that tells us everything we need to know about his mastery of his elements. Bumi's earthbending is strong and precise. In his own way, he embodies the spirit of earthbending, being strong, stubborn, and unwavering. And when he was given the right opportunity, he was able to fall on his enemies like a thunderbolt, hitting them like a landslide, avoiding them when they're strong and striking them when they're weak. These are the reasons why this old master of the White Lotus deserves the highest spot in this level. Now we finally reached the peak of our list, showcasing benders who are just a cut above the rest. Even to many strong benders, they are not even close. The following are not just the greatest earthbenders of their generation, with the most well-rounded abilities, but also individuals who have accomplished such spectacular feats that their names and legacies are immortalized in history, earning them the title of legendary. And the first entry in our legendary tier is none other than the matriarch of metal bending, the blind bandit Tuff Beifong. She belongs at the highest tier because she epitomizes what is considered as the very essence of earth bending, knowing how to listen and wait. She also learned from the original benders, the blind 
find Badger Mose, who taught her how to use earthbending as an extension of her senses. She didn't need the ability to see in order to humiliate an entire Earth Kingdom army. She's practically a hunter hunter Nen master at this point, just because of how wide her range of detection is, allowing her to sense people around her before they are even able to launch their attacks against her. Her skills are very useful in figuring out the structures of her surroundings, always giving her team the advantage, making them feel as if they're always playing on home courts. Toph has a few weaknesses, but on stable ground against anyone, she is almost unbeatable. Her earthbending skills are flawless, precise, strong, well-balanced, and highly creative. Despite her small frame, she was able to hold up a whole library in the desert, and at the end of the series, she also managed to master sandbending, something which she struggled with at first. And what makes her legendary is that her connection to the element is so strong, she managed to make a discovery that revolutionized how things are done within the four nations. Doing what was initially thought to be impossible, inventing metal bending. It is safe to say that the discovery of metal bending changed the world, and we have Toph to thank for that. Strength-wise, Toph is also at the top level, being able to hold her own against experienced titans like Boomy in their 1v1. Toph's remarkable feats, inventions, and skills are the stuff of legends. That is why she definitely belongs in this highly coveted legendary level. Now when I ask myself the question, who is the stronger earthbender, Toph Beifong or Avatar Kyoshi? I realize that it all comes down to a contest between the strongest earthbender of today versus the strongest earthbender in history. And if Toph is the strongest earthbender of today, then I'm gonna have to make a call and proclaim Kyoshi as the strongest earthbender of all time. And not just as an earthbender, Kyoshi's strength was off the charts. Some people may even argue that she must have been the strongest avatar ever. Kyoshi was both an immovable object and an unstoppable force, with an iron will coupled by an iron constitution. She could absorb attacks that would have been quite damaging to normal humans without faltering. Her raw power was so immense that she could lift bedrock straight from the ocean floor. On screen, using her earth and lava bending, she was even able to literally change the world, separating her town from the continent and creating her own island. In her novel, it was even hinted that she may have been able to bend small shards of glass. But just because Kyoshi's strength is greater, doesn't automatically make her a way better bender. Let's not forget that this tier list also deals with creativity and overall mastery of the elements. And if I'm gonna ask myself who is better, not just stronger, but better at earthbending, I'm gonna say that it depends. Because I can easily make an argument for both characters. I think that in terms of control, creativity, and connection to the elements, I think Toph is a lot better than Kyoshi. But when it comes to raw power and fighting strength, then Kyoshi would easily take the top spot. If we have them fight each other, I think the outcome would be very conditional. Toph has better control and creativity, but let's not forget that Kyoshi knows the unique ability of dust stepping, holding a thin layer of dust in the air just at the right moment, so the earthbender can use it as a platform to step on, giving the ability of walking in the air. Kyoshi can counter Toph's seismic sense and land dominance if she uses this aerial dimension. So my prediction is that, out of 10 rounds of fighting, Kyoshi would win 6 rounds and Toph would win 4 out of 10 matches. And although Toph is better at technique and control, Kyoshi is not that far behind her as well. In the beginning, Kyoshi had a lot of trouble bending small objects because her overwhelming strength was more geared towards bending colossal chunks of rock instead of the average size earthbenders normally bend. She fixed this issue up by using her mother's metal war fans, which increased her sensitivity and control. Like I said earlier, benders with weak bending usually rely on their weapons to buff themselves and give them that power boost. But that isn't the case for Avatar Kyoshi. Her earthbending was just so powerful that she needed to nerf herself. And later on, Kyoshi was shown to be bending earth skillfully even without her metal fans. Kyoshi was also not your stock standard earthbender with average technique. Let's remember that she lived up to 230 years. Plenty of time to practice her bending. Later on, her skills became quite refined and specialized, allowing her to make unique skill sets and invent new disciplines. And these are skills and technique that she taught the Dai Li and the Kyoshi warriors. So when it comes to skills, creativity, and specialization, we can also conclude that Kyoshi was top tier as well. So, to finally put a verdict to our earlier questions, I will now say that Avatar Kyoshi is definitely the strongest earthbender of all time. But when it comes to overall mastery, creativity, skill, and connection to the element, I will declare that Toph is overall the better earthbender. Because she scored higher in most of the different areas of our selected criteria. And I'm just following our grading system. They both have areas that they dominate in, and both have displayed extraordinary, nay, legendary feats that put them on a higher tier compared to all other earthbenders. Earth is the element of substance, considered as the most stubborn one among the four, with a nation of people who are proud, resilient, and strong, with a culture and legacy that can endure countless trials, surviving the test of time, an element that seems immovable, unstoppable, and everlasting. And these earthbenders are all great in their own right, because in their own way, they embody 
the very essence of their elements. And if bending existed in the real world, I definitely would want to become an earthbender. What do you guys think of our tier list? Do you agree with the rankings? Let me know in the comments down below so we can talk more about it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.